Hi, I'm Tom. Now, this video was originally meant to be about this. A MacGyvered Zigbee push button that I cobbled together, which I had planned to use in my kitchen as a kind of turn everything off switch. However, over the Christmas holidays, I found a product for sale that was actually very close to what I needed. And here it is, an energy wireless kinetic grid switch. I actually had the same problem as Bruce Wayne when it came to this product. This was the only one that came in black. Let's start by opening it up. As you can see, it's very close to the MK Dimensions push switch that I was planning to use. It's got the same dimensions, so it will fit into the same mount. The only difference is it is a kind of silk, shiny color rather than the matte, but I don't believe that's going to be a problem. What's especially good about this unit is that it has no battery. That's right, you heard me, no battery. It uses the energy generated by depressing the button to actually send a radio signal. Of course, you need something to receive the radio signal, and that's where the wireless receiver module comes in. Now, if we take a look at this, this is a pretty innocuous white box. It has uh, power in, power out, and a button. That's it, and an antenna. So, as I understand it, you just Pair these two together, push the button once to close the relay, push it again to open the relay. Now, as clever as that is, unfortunately, it's just a simple relay. There's no smart home integrations or any kind of API built into this unit at all. But I'm not going to let that stop me. My plan is to introduce one of these into the mix, which is a Shelly i3. So essentially, the button will control the relay, the Shelly will monitor the relay, and Home Assistant will monitor the Shelly. That's the plan anyway. Let's get the relay powered up and we'll start by pairing it with the button. That's all powered up now and according to the instructions I just need to hold this button down for three seconds to put it into a pairing mode. Okay, the little light's gone red. I can hear the relay clicking, and I'll push this once. And the relay stopped clicking, so let me just try that. Okay. We can see the little red lights flashing. And I can actually hear the relay clicking over the sound of this. Okay, all right, so that was pretty easy. That's part one. Now I'll take the Shelly and I'll wire that in. Now I've wired it all in. It's a little bit messy, but I'll talk you through what I ended up with. So the relay still got its power coming in. And as this is a four strand cable, I've taken the black cable actually from here. And that's from the switched kind of output. I've also got the grey, but I've terminated that in a block just so there's no stray cables. And then over here, I have the Shelly i3. Now that's wired in uh, with power from live and neutral. And then I've essentially connected the black cable here to input number three. I've already added the Shelly into Home Assistant. And I'm now going to try and bring that all up. All right, so that will look something like this, where we can see the Shelly i3. You can also see the, the desk here. So now, uh, if I toggle this, hopefully. Hey! So you can now see that input 3 is indicating it's got power. Now, admittedly, that took quite a long time to change, so I'll now toggle the relay off. 
and it's taking about two to three seconds for that to clear. So that's working. It's a little slower to react than I'd hoped, but that may be a symptom of the Shelly i3. I'm not entirely sure how quickly that thing can respond to the power. There may be an alternative approach I can take. I'm not, I'm not sure, I'll have to think on that a little bit, but for now, I do have a path to get me from installing this little battery free switch into my kitchen wall panel. There's one little blank sitting there since the extension was finished waiting for something like this. I'll get that wired in and my plan is to essentially have Home Assistant turn off all the lighting inside and outside so that when we're going to bed we can just push this little switch and Home Assistant will take care of the rest. So I'm going to wrap up there. Hopefully you've found that interesting. Maybe you can take something like this and use it in your own smart home. I'll include a link to this particular company to the, um, the Energy. They do make a variety of different kinetic switches. This was just the one I was interested in, but I might explore some of their other offerings if this proves to be quite reliable. If you enjoyed this video, please do click that like button. That just helps the YouTube algorithm promote the video to a wider audience. If you're interested in these kinds of videos and seeing me tinker with this kind of stuff, please do subscribe. Otherwise, that's it. I'm Tom, and thanks for watching.